Hi everybody on this very cold February afternoon. I think it's on the minus today. I've just been for a walk and I thought I'd come back and uh, do some of my sponges. I've got eight new designs that I'd like to show you and I thought I'd show you how they start off and uh, how they're plucked and how to use them. So here we go. Right, as you can see, uh, this is how they start off. Well, they start off with a drawing first and then I send the drawing away and then there's sponge manufacturer um, charges me to load it up onto a computer and then away they go with a laser machine on this high density sponge and then hopefully we don't have to make any alterations because I have to pay for each alteration but sometimes uh, they come and I realize that I've drawn something too thin or it's too thin or whatever so um, this is how they come and they come on a big block uh, of uh, depending how big the sponge is because we've got 38, 50, 72 and 120 mil. So each design can go on all of the sizes or certain ones I just do on one or two sizes. Now these I am going to do on two sizes but at the moment I've only got it on the 102. And I designed them so that you can actually chop them up if you want to because I wouldn't be stamping mushrooms like this um i would i would individually chop them up like this for me to use in my designs and so i trim them right back but we supply them to you like this where they're just cut away so i'll show you how they're done because i have thought about supplying them and uh, a little bit cheaper if people would pluck their own but it depends if you think you could pluck them so it'd be nice in the comments below to say oh yeah i could easily do that and that'd be nice if you could do them a, a bit cheaper and i'll pluck them when i get them but then i worry but if you pluck off a tail you know you're going to complain so uh, anyway we'll see so here we have a mermaid this is her uh, when she's um well, I've plucked and trimmed her, but I'm not actually going to chop her up, I don't think, chop the fish away. I try to put as many things on the sponges as possible to make them as um, versatile as possible. So what you do is you have to hold, to pluck them, you have to hold the item that is the design and pull away. And you just keep doing that. So you put your finger on the fish and you pull. And you put your finger on the fish and you pull like this now on the outside bit it's easier than the inside bit the inside bit is real tricky because you've got to be very careful that you don't pull anything off the actual design the laser cuts part way down and then uh, you have to pull away the rest now if it's really really fiddly we get tweezers and we open up the sponge like this and we pluck away from the design and I've picked probably the hardest sponge to do to make a point that it's not an easy task we do have things like hearts that um, are quite easy but this is not easy at all so this might be one that nobody would really want to do themselves because if you damage it yourself well then you can't you just have another one because you've damaged it so you just keep holding the piece and pulling. Hold the piece, pull it away. Like that. And I can tell you, sometimes your fingers, when you've done a lot, get pretty sore. The master plucker is Liz. She, she plucks really, really well. And she doesn't lose very many. Because obviously, if we pluck a bit away that we shouldn't be plucking away, well then we don't sell it, obviously. And I end up with with those, using them. I re-chop re them in lots of different ways, make like petals, single petals out of ones where I've chopped a petal off by mistake. So, nearly there. I know it's probably a bit boring to watch, actually, but I just thought it'd be a bit... You know, you just know the history of a, of a sponge it. So, and some people say, oh, well, I'll make my own. But I can assure you, you couldn't make it out of this because this is highly toxic. 
um, and it has to go through special filters so when it's burning it away they tell me some of the designs are really quite make quite a lot of um, uh, I think it's carbon monoxide I'm not really sure which you don't want to be breathing in you can collect and collect and they make you poorly so um, this is all done in a special tank and so nobody and the environment it doesn't go out into the environment so that's it done to a degree and then what I do after I've done that the lighting is a bit bright on this TV I chop away the edge with these are uh, um, really really sharp scissors dress making scissors so I chop away the edge and when you get them you could chop as much as you want off um, to make it as neat as you can I try to get as close to the actual fish or whatever it is as I can it wants to be a bit more out of the middle of there Ooh, should have gone to spec savers think for my I need I haven't put the light on it's very bright in here so I just keep trimming like that until I've made it as neat as I can and that has taken me six and a half minutes to do one sponge so at four pounds fifty you can see that they are well worth their weight in gold I mean they start from we have 140 or more, might be slightly more now some of them are the same design but on different size sponges um, and they start from two pounds seventy. There, that's probably enough. I, I probably might work on it some more for myself. Um, but this is how I sell them. So when you get them, if you wanted to, you could trim away a little bit, and the floor gets covered in sponge, and then I get into trouble. I'll put that in the bin. And sometimes I use it for packing especially the uh, the big bits we use for packing and I also use it to prop clay up when I'm making things out of clay so that one's ready to to, to go to somebody so what I'm going to do now so I'll put my tweezers away because I'm always losing the tweezers uh, I'm going to show you how to um, to use them to their best to the best advantage so I all these sponges have been put in this water here at uh, clean water just a slight squeeze so that they're only damp now this would be a really easy one to do the dog bones so I'm going to get to, I'm using my own clay paint but you could use any paint the stronger the pigment the better so one brown and then I'll have a little bit um, you can't see this but I've just got a little makeup carousel uh, to swivel the if I put the camera up you see that yeah, it's really it's really quite quite cool. So it wasn't very much of it, and I'm as you see, swivels around with all my colours on. <laughs> Little things, eh? So um, I'm going to put a bit of dark brown on now. So there's my two colours, and I do to do it with my finger. So I smear all the one colour of the brown on. Try to get it to absorb into the sponge. Like so. So I've work, really worked it into the sponge. I'm going to tap, just tap a bit on. So you can see that it's it's fairly solid on the sponge. And then I'm just going to mottle a bit of this darker brown so that it's not a flat, flat piece, as in the design's not flat. And then here's a tile. And I'm going to pop it on. You don't have to push much because you don't want to distort, distort the sponge. Now, hopefully, with then just pick it straight up. Oops, hold the tile, pick it up, and you've got your your bones there and they're a slight slightly motley you can fill them in if you want they don't always do that but the first couple of times usually actually it's a good idea to give them a good squeeze uh, in in quite hot water 
uh, and that make because because they're new it's a bit like a new brush they they just work better as they go so but i actually like them like that so i'm going to leave them uh so that's one and then um and then all you do to um clean them is you just put them under a running tap and that and that's it right i'm going to show you how to do a bit more of a complicated one so here's the fairy which obviously she starts off um well, there's two look look that that's this fairy here so you can see where she's been plucked and she's solid you have to pluck all this wing out and then i've cut it right back to the actual fairy another reason why i do that for myself is because i've got 140 of them and so they take a lot of room up in lots of buckets because i've got them like misty curl and sea life etc etc so anyway so this one is just she's slightly damp and I'm going to use a one stroke for her face. So this is like a peachy pinky colour. Just a one stroke like an EZ. This is a creative colour. Uh, and I'm just going to put this on her face. And her arms. And her legs. I'm not worrying about too much whether I've got it on the dress. Because I'm going to do the dress in another colour. And another thing that you could do if you're going to get more than one fairy and this is what I'm going to do I'm actually going to chop off her um, legs at the bottom her wing and her head and her arm and then I'm going to use some of my other sponges like um, say this is too small but this is a, a hibiscus that I've cut off the set of three and I'm going to make it so it looks like her dress and then put one on her head, which my next video is going to be um, on a, a, a tall mug. But I'm going to do a fairy, um, like a fairy meadow scene. So I'm going to do that next. And then I'm going to do a brush stroke one. So there we've got her skin tone on. Now I'm going to give her some hair. So I'm going to pop on some hair. And she can have a fringe. So I'm going to pop on a fringe. Now you can do this with a paintbrush if you want, but I, as I say, I tend not to. I tend to, to tend to use my finger more. So that's her her hairstyle. My old jeans are getting covered. Now I've got a tiny bit on her wing where I don't want it. I'm going to give her a light blue wing, I think. So a little bit of blue and a bit of dark blue or... or um, a bit of turquoisey blue for the edge of the wing. So, in with the finger again. I'm going to open it up, pinch it, wipe that brown off a bit. But it's ended up on her wing. Pinch it, get all on her wing. And then little bit of turquoise and I'm going to just put it on the end of her wing and just smudge it in with my finger so it's blended on the wing. I'm not going to put any facial details on and now I'm going to do her dress. So I'm going to do her dress in pink, a light pink and the edge of her dress in a dark pink. A dark pink and again, pop it on with my finger, put all of the pink, like so. I open it up a bit and then I'm less likely to get her legs. Pinch it. There she's got her dress on. And then I'm going to get the edge of her dress and smudge it up. with the dark. I think you can see that, probably. Yep. And then I'm going to pop her, she's quite tall actually, she's only going to just fit on this four inch tile. I'm going to pop her on the four inch tile. Just give her a tiny, tiny press. I'm drinking tea, not gin. Mm. There we go. And then hold the tile down and give it a pull and then we've got the little fairy 
she probably just wants a little bit more again as i said the hair probably wants filling in a little bit because it's brand new and i didn't put them in hot water so that's her done and then we've got another one so here we've got a group of fish so they could be lots of different colors make sure they're wet this was a bit of a so and so to pluck i have to say i have to say i'm gonna have all different tropical colored fish so we'll have um some orange and some yellow i should have put the, the colors out first really save time some yellow and some red and some lime green Okay, so there's a lot of colours there. I mean, as I said, if you want to use a brush, you can. So if I was going to use a brush, use a nice soft brush. And I'll paint this one green. So that's the fish green. And then I'm going to get another brush, uh, another round brush. And I'm going to pull some orange in from the end of its tail and some red in up here and here. So you've got a multicolor. You've got to do it quite quickly because it might dry out or it might actually dry on the sponge. I'm just going to use different brushes so that it's um, quicker rather than washing between the brush. Just keep one color for the brush. Sometimes as well, the tiles can be a bit um, a bit dry and it's not a bad idea actually to spritz them and I can't see a water spritzer. So what am I going to do? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to use the back of this sponge and just dampen that a little bit because it'll take the colour better. There we go. And uh, then we're going to have um, a red fish. With a green tail. And you could even have some spots in him. You could you know, it's a bit of a big end, back end of the brush, get a smaller one or a stylus and put some uh, orange spots, maybe just uh, on his back, just some tiny blobs top of his back. And then we've got a little fish here. here they're, they're the same sort, those two. They're yin and yang, but they're not quite together on this one. They are on one of the, um, one of the, uh, here. And this one on the mermaid one there's a little yin yang fish there um so we'll have a turquoise fish in the middle and a mummy fish that's the same color like so and then put a little bit of, let's see, because she's a mature mummy fish, we could put um, a different colour on the end of her tail. I'm going to find a, another round brush that I can't. What should we have on the end of that tail? We'll have yellow. going to put some more orange on that because it's absorbed it just wet it again and wet that one again and I think he can have a little bit of red on the end of his tail maybe he could have a bit of a red face There we go, hope he's not dry. A bit more red on there. 
Okay, and then it's tile still damp. Pop him on. Yep. Tiny bit of a push, not too much because you don't want to distort it. Oh, that's pretty. Look, they have all those pretty little fish. And see, and then you could put little black eyes in later. So you can see that that could be used on anything. Uh, with with the other fish that we've got as, as well, got another bigger fish, and then these two um, these two um, what are they? mermaids have got our, our, our fish as well on the same sponge. So we do this mermaid. So the mermaid would do a little bit like the a bit like the fairy. So let's give her skin a skin tone. Let's just put a bit of extra pink on her face. And then her hair could be yellow. Oops, I'm doing this extremely fast just because we're on 20 minutes. I don't really want to bore you too much. And then we can have her tail with this jade. And when is she going to be nude or has she got, she got a cosy on? That's the thing. Hmm, what to do? Mm, I think we'll have a cosy on. So we'll go for. Oh gosh, what? Look at that dark pink top. She's got a dark pink top on. Okay, and then the fish. So the fish are only small, so we could do the fish. They're, they're actually all the same fish on here, just in different sizes. So you can make finished pieces with these, that's fine, and sell them. And at the end of the tail I'm going to do it red. There we go, just go over that again, a bit more paint. Oops, don't want to dirty the tile. I'm going to wet the back of this tile, um, here's this bone one. And just because they're very absorbent at tiles um, and sometimes they it just things usually paint better when they're slightly damp so oh, I've missed her hair up there she's gonna have to be bald I just realized she should have yellow up there okay so I've oh, and I'm doing it out of the view of the camera sorry because I've got no Liz there we go so I'm gonna pop that on there make sure that the paint's not sticking out so you get a nice tight line. Wipe it down my jeans again. And pop that on there. Straight down. Tiny press. Just give it a little bit of t time to um, absorb. You can see I'm not doing it hard. And then hold the tile. Pick it straight up. Oh, that's lovely. Really nice. Can you see that? And then again, you can detail if you want, you know, I think a, a bit of black. You can either just do it with a paintbrush or you can do it with one of my writers. So just give it a shake. Here we have a writer. You can see it's got a, a, a pin so they never block. Just make it go to the end and just give, get that out of the way, just give a tiny little, Tiny little fellas, an eye. There we go. Okay, so they've all got eyes. We'll leave that there, and I'll show you that it doesn't block. Uh, right. So now we've got uh, the mushrooms. So here are the mushrooms. Now, what colour would we do mushrooms? I wonder. We could have them with um, a peachy pink, sort of a brownie pinky top. So I'll mix those two colours together, give it a pinky brown. Oh no, I know, no, no, no. Better still, we'll have a red top. So um, get that off, Just push it in, should be all right. So we'll have a red top. That's more dramatic, isn't it, than trying to make them look 
real. As I say, this comes on as one sponge together. Oh, actually, maybe I should use one sponge. No, I won't. I'll use these. Never mind. Uh, and then a, and then the stalk. You could start off with the brown. And then I probably would put white spots on with my writer later when it was dry. Okay. So there's one and one mushroom. Pop him on. Let's pop it there and leave it. And then we've got two more. So I cut these up because I'm going to do this fairy thing where these are all gathered around the fairy, so obviously I don't want them all together. So here's the next one. And the next one. So if you're in America, we've got Drew, which is Mudzo, who, who has these shipped in and she's just about to put in an order. So if you like this and you want to order and you're in the States or Canada, it would be cheaper for you to get them there because the shipping is horrendous. And, put that down there. and then, oh, there's a little tiny fella here. Oh my goodness me, that's so, so small. Give that a stem as well. I can see I'm going to use these a lot, these mushrooms. I'll have that one. Let's have a look. Let's pick this one up. I think I'll have one over there. I'm tempted to put another little one, but then you think there was more little ones on the sponge, so I won't. I don't know. Oh, yeah, I have got a lighter with white in it. I put my clay paint in, so any end go in these. Sometimes I put a little bit of enhancer in it, which is like a thickening agent, um, to thicken it so it sticks up. Ooh, this is one that's thick, yes. Oh, it's a bit wet, but I'll just do one. Oh yeah, best to let them dry because, there you go. See, okay, so that's that one. Run out of spaces to put them. Um, probably won't be able to get this lid back on without my specs when it's thick like this because I've thickened this with enhancer. I tend to put the lid back on quicker. Uh, so what else have we got? We've got another fairy here, so again. Do all a skin, skin tone, with a skin tone paint. You could have a little shoe on if you wanted. Uh, face. A bit more. This is called Baby Face. This is a creative colour, which is a one stroke. Which used to be my favourite till I made the clay paints and now they're my favourite. Oh, I've gone on her face a bit of brown. There we go. And then, oh, that's a leg down there, isn't it? Oh, she's kneeling. Maybe give her a pink cheek. Okay, and then wings. Here's her wings, and then she's going to have some sore of clothes on, I think. So what shall we do? I think we'll do that with a brush to make it a bit easier. She could have, um, uh, let's see, let's give her a green dress, a green bodice suit. She's a little fairy in the woods. touch of pink so she's got a pink dress on I 
And then she's actually got an arm coming down there, which I've gone wrong. So I'm going to paint the arm over the top. So that is an arm coming down. Okay, I think it needs a little bit more green on there. I think she might she might quite look nice with spots on her suit later and maybe you want to if you want to just touch another colour from the edge of her wings and push it in. And she'll just fit on here I think. See if you put mushrooms around her she'd look so cute wouldn't she but uh, I don't want to mislead people because these are what go on the website as what's on the sponge. And hold the thing and put it straight up and then you've got the fairy. Okay so you can colour her hair in a bit darker if you decide to later. As I say they were a lot better if they're actually uh, um, washed in hot water first. should have done that myself. Uh, how many is that? That's uh, one, two, three, four, five, five, six, seven, eight. So we must have three more somewhere. What have we got? Oh, pause. Yes, pause. So here uh, we've got uh, little paw prints, which are great with the bones if you're doing dog bowls and things. So I'm going to wet that and um, do the bones. Just get a little bit more um, colour. A little bit of terracotta for poles. Okay, so you can actually put that in there if you want and pounce it up and down. And you could blend it if you wanted, but make sure you haven't filled it in up totally, that all the pores are still separate. Might just have a bit of dark on the on the end of the There's another one there. If you blur just to make sure that the paint pops between the pores. There's one more somewhere. Do you know I can't see it? I don't know what I've done with it. Is it yes, it's here. Nope. Um, there is a big one. Oh dear. Uh, oh well, I'm gonna have to leave that on for now. But it's got it's got three, so this is the other one is twice as big as that. It might it might be on the floor somewhere. I plucked it. So you hold the thing and pull them off. And then you can see you've got little little paw prints. As I say, there is one that's twice as big that goes with that. Um, so then we've got, what else have we got? We've got this mermaid here. So that is uh, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's it. So this is the last one of the new ones. So I would do the same with her. So if you want to do the arm the face with the skin colour. Um, wet this. Okay, and then uh, the fish, whatever colour you want the fish to be. And then the little yin yang fish. It could maybe be jade, yin and yang. Oh, this is one that I'm keeping because I've actually plucked the tails away. The first one I plucked. Oh, or was it my husband? I thought he'd have a go, and he said, "Not, not again. Thank you very much. <laughs> not my, not my too fiddly." So uh, this is not one that I think somebody wants to pluck themselves. But um, I'll have to paint the tail in, unfortunately because I pulled it off. I mean, they are delicate, but I've had a lot of mine years. So um, don't think uh, because I plucked it off, they're all gonna not last two minutes because I've had them for so long. 
and I only have to sell one finished piece and I've paid for all the sponges that I've used on it. So I'm going to give this one a dark green tail. Oh, I'm tapping away out of view, sorry. I wonder if I'll make this one go live. If you're not seeing it, I'll have to play it back. Sometimes I don't play them back, but I will have to play this one back. Like so. And then give her a little suit. With how she can have a little orange suit on. There we go. Orange suit. And then pop her down. That's one. Tiny press. Hold the hold the tile. And pick her up. And there you have the little fish. Now the fish that's got no tail, because I pulled it off. It's very simple. I'll just give it one. And that one as well. And then let's see if this is still going. See if it's blocked. No, it hasn't blocked. See, it's still running. So take the drip off the end. Just put a tiny dot uh, in those two fishes eyes and that's it that's ready to fly it oh, actually that one could possibly do with a little bit more tail there we go just darken it up a bit and that's it that's that's all you do so those are all the new uh sponges i hope you've enjoyed it and if you'd like to to buy any i will put the link below um where to buy them from Thanks for watching. Bye.